So today we're looking at the Infinity InTouch Services application available for Apple iPhone or Android powered products. You can find this application through your Google Play Store or Apple App Store by searching Infinity InTouch and then selecting on the black Infinity logoed icon. This application will be available for Infinity models starting with the model year 2017 until we get to 2019. This will be on vehicles equipped with the factory navigation system, and it will exclude the QX70, since that vehicle did not have it on there. So if you do have one of those, unfortunately, it won't be a system that you can use in that vehicle. However, on all the remaining vehicles is available. Now, this application will only work if you have a current subscription or you're still within your trial subscription from when the vehicle is purchased to released new. So if you don't have a current subscription, this application won't really work for you until you do have one currently subscribed. So just going to a little bit further information here just to show you exactly what the application can do. Right now we're looking at the main home screen which shows us that it's currently connected to an Infinity QX60, nicknamed LC QX60. As you can see from this screen, we're able to do things such as starting from the top left, flash the lights and sound the horn. We're trying to locate the vehicle in a parking area or somewhere that we're just not quite familiar with where we left the vehicle. Below that, we have the option of flashing the lights. In the center, we have the remote engine start function, and we can also stop the remote engine start function from there as well. And then on the far right hand side, we have the locking and unlocking availability for this particular vehicle that we can do. Now, one thing we do want to mention here is that all these functions can be completed regardless of whether you are near the vehicle or if you're a completely different country, as long as the vehicle has a clear view to the satellite above, this system will work for you. So, for example, if you're at the airport and we've all been there, we've been in a rush and we're not quite sure if we've locked the vehicle before we left on that lengthy vacation, you can use this application to remotely lock the vehicle and ensure that it is locked. So. Just a real quick example here, I'm going to unlock the vehicle here by touching the unlock icon. Once you touch the unlock icon or any of the icons on the screen, it will ask for a four digit pin. Now this four digit pin, you are able to set up through your online portal or when you purchase or lease your vehicle, your sales associate may have helped you get that set up as well. However, if you did forget that, as you can see right below the, the pin icons, it does allow us to reset that pin. So I'm gonna type in my pin here for this vehicle. And then right now it's going to contact the vehicle. You'll notice that the unlock icon is beginning to cycle. And it's gonna give us either a red, a red X or a green check mark. So to let us know whether it was successful or if it did not function. So right now it's still looking for the vehicle and we'll give it a moment. And as you can see that the door is now unlocked on the vehicle. And when you do that, it unlocks only the driver's door of the vehicle. It won't unlock all four of the doors. So that is something to keep in mind there for you. However, when you do click lock, that does lock the all four doors on the vehicle, including the rear tailgate. So that's a real quick look at what you can do as far as your locking, unlocking, remote start, flashing the horn, honking the lights, or flashing the lights and then honking the horn. Um, so that's a real quick look there. You'll notice at the very bottom of the screen, we have four icons in total. So we have the home icon, we have our navigation icon, our safety shield icon, and then of course our connected services icon. So if we go ahead and select our navigation icon here, as you can see, it's telling us where the vehicle was currently, where the vehicle was at about four days ago, but we have a couple additional options here. So this isn't just useful for locating the vehicle. This is also useful for sending uh, destinations to the car's navigation system from your mobile device. So what we'll do now is we can go ahead and select my car finder. And it's going to do the same thing. It's going to reach out to the satellite to determine 
where the vehicle's at and send a location beacon out to it and then give us that information via our mobile phone. So also useful, especially if you have someone else using your vehicle or maybe your kids or a grandparent who's using the car and you just wanna make sure they're somewhere safe. So as you can see, it's still at the same location, which is great. You also have a couple of additional options here. So the little person there walking can give you like on foot directions. And then of course, the second one here can give you the current location of where you're currently at. So one additional item to look at up here at the very top, you'll see we have favorites and then send to car. And you're also able to search. So what we'll do is we'll search a pretty specific uh, location here. So we'll select search and we're gonna type in um, a really great restaurant. So we'll type in tiny boxwoods and then we're gonna click search. So now it's gonna do a quick search for us to determine where exactly we're talking about. And we are referring to the tiny boxwoods on West Alabama Street. So if I go ahead and select that, it gives me a couple of options here. So it shows me the location of Tiny Boxwoods and I can either call to make a reservation or confirm that they're opened or closed. We can mark it as a favorite destination if we wished. So that way it's always stored, available for us. And we also have the option of sending it to the car. So in this circumstance, I will send it to the vehicle by just touching send to car. And then same thing, it gives us a green check mark to let us know that that navigation information has been sent to the vehicle. And in like one of my previous videos where we go through the in-car in-touch services, you do have to sync all information beats to pull that information to the car. So that's a couple of things you can do right there. At the very top, since I've already saved Tiny Box was a favorite, if I touch favorites, you'll notice that's within here. And I have the option to, once again, send to the car, select your call. And then I also can select send to car and see that I did send that destination to the vehicle very bottom of the screen as well, going back to our four icons, we have our safety shield icon. So if I select that, we have all of our monitoring and alerts. So this is more of your parental control figures for the vehicle. If you are having other people use the car or children use the vehicle, at the very top, we have our max speed alert. If we select max speed alert, we can add a maximum speed alert by touching at the very bottom since this vehicle does not have one. So we'll go ahead and select. And right now we can set the speed. Of course, 55 is a little slow. So we want to make sure that nobody's going above. Let's put it at 88 miles an hour. Okay, we'll go back to the future here. And we can also display the alert within the vehicle as well. So if the vehicle does exceed 88 miles per hour, the in-car notification messaging will appear for the driver of the vehicle at that time. Let them know they've exceeded that max speed alert. So I'm going to turn that on. And then in this plate circumstance, I'll go ahead and select save at the very top right. And then now it's going to save that information for us. So that way the max speed alert has been created in the vehicle and the person who is using the car knows that, hey, I can't go above 88 miles per hour. Okay. And then of course our drive zone alert will allow us to create a drive zone for the vehicle. So if we want to make sure the car does not leave a certain area, we can, so we'll select drive zone, and then I'm going to just kind of pan out here. And we're gonna select the main Houston area here. There we go, and we'll select our drive zone size. So we wanna make sure that it's, you can put it anywhere between 25 to 100 miles. So if we move that all the way out here, we can say that we probably don't want the vehicle to go more than, we'll be generous and say 90 miles. Perfect. So we want to get notifications of arrivals and departures. So at the very bottom of the screen, we have the option to select arrival as well as departure. So that way we can know like, okay, did the vehicle leave the zone or did it enter that zone? So we'll select departure here since the vehicle is within that zone right now, okay? And you also have the option of displaying that alert in the vehicle as well. So we'll click save. And then of course we now know that the vehicle won't leave 90 miles of Houston. And if we do 
have that occur, then at that point in time, we'll be able to get a message via our mobile alerts to let us know the car has exceeded that drive zone. You also have a curfew alert available as well. So if you do want to set up a curfew for maybe you have someone at home babysitting or maybe you've left the kids, been very trustful, and want to make sure that the vehicle does not leave at a certain time, we can set up different days of the week as well as different times that we want to make sure that the vehicle does not leave the area. So right now, we'll go ahead and let's say it's going to be like a a Friday or Saturday night, we'll select both Friday and Saturday. And then we're gonna say from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. the car should not turn on. And then we'll display the alert in the vehicle. So in that circumstance, if the vehicle's engine does cycle after 10 p.m. or before 6 a.m., we'll get an alert to say, hey, this vehicle has left that area, has been turned on during that time zone. So real good way for parental controls if you wanted to, okay? So we're not gonna save that, we'll just select uh, cancel and it's gonna bring us back out. So we'll go back to our final one, which is going to be our valet alert. So this is useful, especially if you do use valet parking quite frequently. You can turn it on and then of course set a valet alert distance range, similar to what we did with the drive zone. Right now, it's typically set to 0.25 miles, so it shouldn't take a valet more than 0.25 miles to valet park your vehicle. But same circumstance, if the vehicle leaves more than 0.25 miles, then you'll get an alert on your mobile device to let you know if the vehicle has exceeded the valet alert uh, distance zone that you've set up. Finally, at the very bottom of the screen, you'll also notice that we have a headset icon. So if I go ahead and select the headset icon, these are more of your concierge features, your live assistant. So one of my favorite features is the very top one, the Infinity Personal Assistant, and they are available to help you out with pretty much anything with the exception of legal advice. Um, 24 hours a day, and from what I'm told, all these folks are located in the big town of Dallas, Texas, and they are really helpful. They'll send you information to the car if you're within the vehicle when you call them. They can also make reservations, and I've even used them to get electronics, for example, um, like iPhone. When the unused iPhone came out, I got one on reserve through the Baby Personal Assistant. You also have the option of getting roadside assistance as well. So with roadside assistance, this does use your GPS location off from your mobile device. So it can get you assistance pretty quickly. You don't have to really know exactly where you're at. They will have that information available. At the very bottom, we have our stolen vehicle locator. And the stolen vehicle locator is something that you can use only after you filed a police report. So they won't really tell you exactly where the car is at, but they do send that information to local law enforcement, so that way they are able to recover your vehicle for you. I have used this before, and I can tell you it does work pretty well. Um, the vehicles that I've had been taken, unfortunately, uh, those vehicles were recovered within the same day, within a few hours. At the very bottom, we have our customer care line, so that's the same 1-800-662 number that you normally would dial for Infinity Consumer Affairs. If you select any one of these icons, it just gives you the option to dial out. So you don't have to memorize the number, it's just here for you. Going back to our home screen, at the very, very top right of the screen, you'll see three bars. If we select that, we'll give a little bit more information here. So we can look at our vehicle information, activity history, the profile, our emergency contacts, frequently asked questions, terms and conditions, as well as sign out of the application. If we select vehicle information, we have a little bit of additional information here that we can look at. So the one that you probably get through your email is the vehicle health report, but you can also view that from your mobile phone. And this is just a once a month report that just gives you a little bit of further information on how the vehicle's doing. So. Right now, unfortunately, it's not available for me on this particular vehicle. Like I mentioned, it does come out once a month, but it will show you things like, do you do for an oil change? Is there a check engine light? Anything like that on the vehicle, and whether it's something that's able to be done on your next service or something that would require immediate service. 
Of course, we also have our notification settings, so we can go in here and determine like how do we want to be notified. So we can turn on or off our push notifications or just have things sent by text or by email. It's just completely up to you. And that applies for all your remaining services there as well. And at the very bottom, our package information will tell us what our subscription is linked to. So here we're looking at the two varying levels of service. So the InTouch Services Premier is what we have currently active on the car until 2021. And that gives us our remote start, our lock and unlock, and then our flashing horn and the light or flashing the lights honking the horn. And of course, our Fanny Personal Assistant destination assistance where we typed in tiny boxwoods and sent that to the car. That's all available through that premier service, which is available for one year complimentary when you purchase or lease a new infinity. Below the InTouch Services Select, that's available for up to four years after you've purchased the vehicle. So as you can see, it has a different expiration date, which is a little bit further out. And of course, this will be limited strictly to your in-car messaging. And then of course, your vehicle health report, your roadside assistance, and then of course your lock and unlock fit functions for the car. So those of you who do have an Infinity that is a little bit older, maybe between that 2017 to 2018 model year, you will probably still have this InTouch Services Select active on your car. So you can add to that by just extending the services for the Select or you can go ahead and, type and add in that Premier service again to get those additional functions. So just a real quick look there. Of course, if you do have any additional questions or comments, please feel free to leave a comment. Also take a moment to like, rate, and subscribe to the channel for more additional information for your infinity and getting the most out of it. Thanks for being with us.